Bear with me, YouTube. We're almost there. You won't have to put up my prophesy and, and my, my anger anymore. <laughs> but I assure you, this is not bullying. I'm not breaking any of your rules. Just let me have some time with my videos out there. In due time, I might even, you know, don't quote me on this, but I might even take them down myself if I feel that's fit. But I don't see any reason. I see that I'm right so far and that everything I'm putting up is there for a reason. Okay. I bring you John 15, 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, and I've chosen... i got to turn the light here. I go freaking blind. Okay. As it is, you do not belong to the world, and but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecute me, they will persecute you also. If they obey my teaching, they will obey yours. They will treat you this way because of my name, for they do not know the one who sent me. If I had come, not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for sin. He who hates me hates my father's will. If I had not done among them who, what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles. And yet they have hated both me and my father. This is, But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. Whenever the counsel comes to whom I send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Oh, I have told you so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this. I, I know that when the time comes you will remember that I have warned you I did not tell you this at first because I was with you okay so Jesus didn't tell you that at first and stress it out enough at first so I'm gonna stress it not enough at first either and I'm gonna give it to him now this is important they're gonna come after you they're gonna persecute you all those who watch my video unless you're a cop already unless you have a good position in society that they're not gonna question you they might associate you with my one of my groups my study group, my focus group, my vengeance group, my camera group, you know, just break up my friends and just throw them in one of the groups too, you know, they don't know what the hell they're doing. And really, I have no, carried out any violent attacks, so they have no reason to keep tabs on me on that level. So, the world hated the disciple, they will hate Jesus too. Um... Okay, Paul defends his, his ministries. And he even boasts about his sufferings in uh, in Corinthians. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about Second Corinthians. Okay, and I think we'll go into First and Second Corinthians right now. Why not? Okay, so. Ministry, you know, Paul's defense of his ministry, uh, Paul and the false apostles, Paul's vision is throwing final warnings. I right, won't we'll go final warnings. This is the third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. I'll now repeat it while absent. This is Second Corinthians 13. On my return, I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the other, since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me. He is not weak for deal in dealing with you, but pa is powerful among you. For to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power we live with him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do not, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you, unless, of course, you fail the test? And I trust you, you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not that people will see that we have stood the test but that you will do what is right even though we may seem to have failed for we cannot do anything against the truth but only for the truth we are glad whenever we are weak but you are strong and our prayer is for your perfection this is why I write these things when I am absent that when I came come I may not have to be harsh in use of my authority the authority of God gave me for building you up not tearing you down all right so uh, got a couple minutes so let me find uh, you find my defense for First Corinthians. Okay. So he starts talking about uh, divisions in the church, and he talks about um, 
the apostles of Christ. Expel the immoral brother. Okay, so they had problems with their church in the beginning. It talks about sexual immorality. Um, start hitting the stack the last second. Yeah, they're really trying to mess up my videos. Um, here we go. Propriety and worship. This is number 11, chapter 11, 1 Corinthians 11. Follow my examples, I follow the example of Christ. I praise for remembering me and everything and for holding to the teaching just as I passed them on to you. Now I want you to realize that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every of the woman is man. And the head of the Christ is is God. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head, and every woman who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head. It is just as though her head was shaved. If a woman does not cover her head, she should have her hair cut off. And if it is a disgrace for a woman to have her hair cut off or shaved off, she should cover her head. A man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. For this reason, and because of the angels, the woman ought to have the sign of authority on her head. In the Lord, however, woman not, is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman came from man, so also man is born of woman. But everything comes from God. Judge for yourselves. It is proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered. Does not the very nature of the things teach you that if a man has long hair, it is a disgrace to him? But that if a woman has long hair, and it is a glory, for long hair is given to her as a covering. If anyone wants to pray... If anyone wants to be contentious about this, we have no other practice, nor do the churches of God. So he's addressing the Nazarite point of view right there. And, you know, with the whole shave your head thing and the, the lock of the dreads. This is one of the splits from what Rastafari, what's one of the differences? I'll end it there.